Right now, it's time to welcome our first guest, Carrie Hannon. Carrie Hannon is a nationally recognized expert and strategist on career transitions, entrepreneurship, personal finance, and retirement. She's a frequent television and radio commentator and a sought after speaker for conferences around the country. Her work frequently appears in the nation's top publications, including Forbes, uh, the New York Times, and USA Today. She's also appeared as a career and financial expert on The Dr. Phil Show, NBC Nightly News, and many other programs. Her best selling books include Love Your Job, The New Rules for Career and Happiness, and Great Jobs for Everyone 50 Plus finding work that keeps you happy and healthy and pays the bills. Carrie, welcome to the show. Lovely to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Of course. You know, you've been quoted as saying that, you know, we should retire the word retire. What makes you say that? You know, David, this is a time in life where I think of retiring as a time of stepping back and moving backwards into something. And now with the longevity and longer lives, this is really a time in our life to step forward and embrace doing new things that maybe you didn't have a chance to do in the earlier part of your career. Yeah, we were talking earlier in the show, as you heard about, you know, the reasons people that people do this, and a lot of it's got to do with self-fulfillment, goals, hobbies, and so on and so forth. What do you think are some of the biggest non, that you've seen in terms of non-financial drivers that cause people to want to go back to work once they so-called retire? Oh, oh my gosh, the biggest thing is the social engagement. I swear, when people step away from the workforce, they go into a depression, they grieve their old job, their old identity. And this is an opportunity to really, you know, stay active, be part of a community. And actually, as you just mentioned, it's a great opportunity to get involved with people who are doing something that's meaningful and meaningful to you and maybe making a difference in the world as well. Tell us a little bit about this thing that's called your fitness program. Oh my gosh, all right, this is my favorite. Any time, okay, this is a stage in life where you're thinking about maybe you're shifting gears to go do a new kind of work or maybe even start your own business. But what it is is you need to have three things in order to make a successful shift at this stage in life. You need to be financially fit, you need to be physically fit, and you need to be spiritually fit. And by the financial fitness, I mean you need to be lean and mean, pay down debts. This can take a little bit of time, plan ahead to do this, but you may even want to downsize your living situation. Anything you can do, start with doing a budget of where you can trim back, but anything you can do so that you can be lean and have, it gives you opportunities because debt is a dream killer. Mm. Debt is really the money is the number one stumbling block to people trying to find work that means something to them in this stage in life. Physically fit, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Ageism is alive and well in the workforce. And if you can be physically fit, it's better than Botox. You're giving off this energy, this vibe, this can-do spirit. And employers don't know what that is, but they want it. They want to be around you. People like being around you. And spiritually fit, I don't mean woo-woo religion. I'm talking about having a place of ballast in your life where you can be sure. centered. Because making change can be really stressful. Now, people always say they feel mentally sharper when they're back to work, they feel physically sharper. Have you seen any studies, quantified studies, that back that up other than just how people feel? You know, there have been lots of studies, you know, anecdotally as well. Um, there is some, uh, there was a big French study that was showing, you know, kind of the use it or lose it, even showing how work can stave off Alzheimer's and other sorts of dementia. It really is important, that, and we know this, by using your brain, staying active, and physically and mentally, it really adds to the quality of your life. And, you know, it's really just overall can have these other benefits moving forward. So we're going to take a commercial break. As soon as we come back, we're going to talk to you about some of the mistakes that people over age 50 make, whether the mistakes they make that force them to work later in life or the mistakes they, they make when they're actually looking for work or, or trying to stay active later in life. So stay with us, Carrie, please. And you stay with us, too. We have much more from Carrie Hannon right here on The Income Generation. But right now, it's time to welcome back Carrie Hannon, author of the book, Great Jobs for Everyone Over the Age of 50. So, Carrie, tell us, what, what makes a job more ideal in many cases for someone over 50 versus someone under 50 from your research? 
think the biggest piece of this is people at this stage in life, you want flexibility. You know, you want to have a sense that you have some control over your life and you have some autonomy. So what we're looking for are jobs that give us that opportunity, whether it's working, you know, some from home, working part time, uh, flex schedules. There's all kinds of ways. But the biggest piece of it I, I really have found is that people just want to have some, some sense of control. So what mistakes do you find that people make when they're over the age of 50? They're part of the income generation. They're part of our viewership here on the show. Uh, and they're looking to work part-time contract work or, or do something, not fully retire. What are some of the common mistakes? Let them know so that we can all avoid this. Well, the, the biggest mistake, David, is people try to replicate their old job. You know, and so don't get stuck in a moment. You need to move forward. Think of ways you can redeploy your existing skills mm -hmm. into a new arena, a new field, and, and be open about salary. People get stuck on how much they have to earn and they get so insulted by the salaries. Get over it. Think about what it is that you really want to do and look at ways to find value around the edges. You know, you can negotiate for that flexibility we just talked about. You might, you know, have more vacation time. They want to have a certain salary and a certain title. These are not important at this stage in life. You've done that. And also they think they're going to have a linear job as we had before. This is a time in life where you're going to, I think of it like a patchwork quilt, which is really fun. You might do a little of this, a little of that, do this for a short time and switch to doing something else or do several things at the same time. So, you know, open up, open yourself up in your thinking and you must, they get stuck flatline intellectually. You've got to stay learning. You have got mm -hmm. to be up to speed with technology. You have to be up to speed with the industry you want to work in. Don't lay back sure. and think that what you've learned in the past is going to work today. So not necessarily jumping back into the same job that you had, you know, kind of just thinking in the box, uh, does it necessarily mean giving up your skill set or throwing it down the drain, doing something totally different? You're saying think about how you can take your skill set and use it in a different way that might, might be more challenging, more fulfilling. Absolutely. It's redeployment. It's not reinvention. And the other thing is, you know, you really need to get out of your head and into the world. Mm -hmm. People will sit there at their computers shooting out resume for jobs or, you know, cold calling things. What you need to do is get out and volunteer. Go do something so you don't have this gap in your resume that you've been doing nothing. Get out, volunteer you ne for a cause you care about. You never know. You might find an opportunity right there. But what you're also doing is you're meeting people, you're networking. You never know what you might hear about. Now, you mentioned finances before, so in the 40 seconds or so we have left in this block, tell our viewers, what are the two or three biggest mistakes you see people do with their finances that forces them essentially to go back to work once they've retired? Well, I must say, you know, David, this probably isn't your audience, but I talk to a lot of people around the country, and the biggest fear is they're going to outlive their money. They mm -hmm. haven't paid attention. Uh, they haven't saved appropriately to this point. They don't. They haven't built in for this longevity bonus that we're living these longer lives. Right. They haven't thought about the cost of medical expenses moving forward. You really need to pay attention and, and look, do a retirement plan, look forward, and make sure you have a budget. That's good advice. It's always good advice. Carrie, please stay with us for one more block. We want to have you back here for more. And you stay with us, too. We have many more words of wisdom from our new friend, Carrie Hannon. Stay with us. We'll be right back after the break. But right now, let's welcome back Carrie Hannon. Carrie, uh, you know, it's interesting. I find that a lot of people, when they retire from their full-time job, uh, actually do something entrepreneurial. It's like a, a new trend. Why is that? What causes that? Tell us a little bit about that and the pros and cons associated with it. Well, you're absolutely correct. You know, in fact, the over 50 set is the biggest demographic starting businesses today. I mean, faster than, than anyone in their 20s and 30s. There's huge growth here. And why it is, is a couple of things. One, I think the job market is a little tough for people over 50, and they get sick of the rejection, and they say, you know what, I'm just going to be my own boss. I'm going to do my own thing. And that kind of gets them started on that path. I also think this is a time in life where we often pause and we've had life crises ourselves. We've had a health crisis, perhaps we know people we've lost too soon. Um, and we start and we say, okay, is this all there is? What can I be doing? And it really motivates you to start your own thing. And it's so much easier today than ever because you don't need bricks and mortar. You can start you know, in a home office with your computer and have a virtual business going. So I think there's so many opportunities to start businesses today without a huge capital upfront investment. You know, it's actually kind of funny because, of course, I've always been self-employed. I've always owned, owned the company. 
Um, and uh, I'm a certified flight instructor at a flight school. I do a little bit of flight instruction just for ha-has. And it's funny, I actually think it's great to work for somebody. The pressure's off my back. I don't have to make any decisions. I just say, yes, boss, sure, whatever you want us to do, we'll do it. Um, but, you know, for many, it's the opposite. Many people have worked with somebody have, for their entire lives have not made all those operational decisions. And now they get to retirement, and I think they want to be their own boss. They, they want to be able to control their own legacy. Are you finding that that's a big motivation also for entrepreneurship? 100%. You know, it really is controlling your own destiny and your legacy. And it's your chance. You may have had something you've always had this burning desire to do since you were young, or maybe it's a passion that's developed over the years. But these are really your years that if you've saved appropriately and you can do it financially, that a lot of people say, let me give it a shot. You know, and it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I tell everyone, no rash moves. Go slowly. This is, yeah. you know, any successful uh, entrepreneur I've talked to has take, taken three to five years to kind of build out their plan, to apprentice and moonlight, to do their research, to find mentors, do a good business plan. This does not happen overnight. So it's a process and enjoy the ride. So have you seen any statistics of, of success rates of businesses owned by people over 50 versus started under the age of 50? Any such statistics that give our viewers hope that all their real <laughs> life experience and common sense could maybe increase their chance of success as an entrepreneur? It is so true because I think it is. And actually, you know, the seniors actually actually have, you know, more capital to get started with a business and a better network and so forth. And yes, in fact, I don't have the exact number at the top of my head, but I will say that SCORE, uh, the Small Business Administration, has had has done research on this. And, you know, the average business has like a five year run. Right. But with the um, with the senior starting businesses, their longevity of the businesses are growing. And it's because of this practical, it's not that they're risk averse, it's this practical approach to starting a business. It's not taking a flyer on something. It's a slow, methodical process. And yep. it's also something uh, that I think is interesting and maybe we'll talk a little more about is there's often a pairing up with a younger sure. entrepreneur with an older and entrepreneur. And Carrie, unfortunately, we're out of time. We need to leave it there. Carrie Hannon, author of Great Jobs for Everyone Over the Age of 50. We'll be right back here on The Income Generation.